Shang Tsung's island. Here we go again. Oh shit. Here we go again. Alright guys, listen up. <laughs> They spelt combat wrong. Hello everyone and welcome back to Game Talk, where we talk about games, new and old. And today, I complain about Ermac and Quan Chi not being added into Mortal Kombat 11. What? Ah uh, yes, Mortal Kombat 11 is released, and everyone's recording their shitty reactions to the silly and over-the-top fatalities. I mean, it's a phenomenon at this point. Mortal Kombat X didn't do as much as I was hoping for compared to MK9, so I hope there is a lot of innovation and new content here. I mean, I chose not to look at too much gameplay before the release so it could be fresh for when I first played it, but from what I have seen, it looks quite promising. Now, I have been waiting forever for this game to come out. About five months to be precise. And of course, with Mortal Kombat games, what I'm hoping for is a damn addicting fighting game at its core with some great mechanics and some new mechanics compared to its predecessor. I'm also hoping for some new modes and additional content to keep me playing the game. So let's get right into the game. Okay, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the local fight mode and cover the basics. I like this character select screen a lot this time. It's given me an old school Street Fighter Alpha 3 vibe. There are 24 characters in the default roster. There is one locked character, however, which is Frost. Frost can be unlocked in the story mode, or you can bypass that by paying about 8 Australian bucks or something. Which is an odd design choice, but whatever. The 25th character is locked as well through the pre-order bonus, Shao Kahn. Which I also find weird. I mean, yeah, whatever, have pre-order bonuses, but why are characters so beloved and iconic to the franchise? What if I'm a Mortal Kombat fan and I wanted to see reviews on the game before I bought it? Then that's too bad. Give in 8 bucks and I'll get him. A very weird design choice, but okay. And of course, with the characters, you have the Mortal Kombat classics, spelt with a K of course, like your Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Raiden, Johnny Cage, Sonya, etc. And I'm happy to say that there are returning characters that didn't appear in Mortal Kombat 10, like Noob Cybot, Baraka, Jade, Shao Kahn of course, Cabal, and Scarlet. A nice character roster, but of course, not the biggest we've seen. And they didn't add Ermac and Quan Chi, and that makes me an angry, angry, angry man. Okay, now in terms of fighting, I literally want to lick it up so I can shove it up. It's really damn good. Now, this is what I want a Mortal Kombat game to be. An addictive fighting game at its core with some great mechanics. It feels slightly tighter and less slippy than Mortal Kombat 10, which does make it feel slightly slower, but it doesn't really affect you that much once you get hooked into it. Movesets, I feel like, are a lot easier to learn now, but of course, combos are still hard to master. There's a lot of variety with the movesets of the characters as well, and hey, it even feels like they've buffed certain characters that lacked in quality from the last game, like Kotal Khan. I actually enjoy playing as him now, but he's still a ripoff of Ogre from Tekken. <laughs> Environmental elements are also back, and a cool new feature is when countering a move with the uppercut, it shows a cool x-ray animation. And when these x-rays come up, they will do more damage to the move you're doing. And it's not just uppercuts that give you these animations as well. Speaking of x-rays, the special x-ray moves from Mortal Kombat X has been replaced with the Fatal Blow. And they're basically the same thing, but without the x-ray. And instead of filling up a meter by using special moves, Moves, they've instead replaced it with a Tekken 7 style rage system. What I mean by that is when you get to a low health, your health bar will glow red, and it will allow you to perform your special rage art. It's basically the same here, but there is one flaw with it. If you miss your fatal blow, you can do it again in the same round after you wait for a bit. I don't think getting a second chance to use a special move is very good. I much prefer how Tekken 7 does it. If you miss, tough shit. Nevertheless, this game at its core is one damn good fighting game. So good in fact that I'm gonna drink water. I was thirsty. And of course, the fatalities are back, and they're over the top and stupid, and that's great. The latest Mortal Kombat games have definitely nailed it with the fatalities. Just like MKX, there are two fatalities per character, and one is hidden. And might I just say, Johnny Cage always has the best fatalities. Don't at me, you window lickers. This game definitely looks stunning. The character models are good, not the best I've ever seen, although they've seemed to have gone for more of the original MK style for the character models, which is something that I love. Some characters looked a bit weird in MKX, but here they looked really great. Even Kitana has gone back to Asian in this game because last game she was Latino for some reason. Something I really like about the visuals in this game is the environment, the effects, and the animation. This game looks so fluent because of all the effects and animation. They absolutely nailed it, especially with the fatal blows. All these aspects make this game not just look amazing, but just feels nice to play with as well. Hey, <laughs> you know what else feels nice to play with? Spider-Man 2. When a fast-paced game has great effects combined with such fluent and real-looking animation just hooks me onto it, just like Spider-Man. And I usually don't care about graphics in games that much, but when they're good, 
I'll mention it. Aside from the regular local play mode, the practice mode is there with the fatality training as well. Towers are also back with multiple options to choose from. Basically, if you don't know how they work, you fight through multiple opponents and versus the boss character at the end, which just like Shinnok in the last game, in this game is a character called Chronica, which seems to be a keeper of time of some sorts. That is unless you play the endless tower mode. Once you finish the tower, an ending cutscene will play for your chosen character. The crypt is also back and it's definitely the coolest and biggest one yet, with various easter eggs to come across. It's really cool to explore this area with encounters with Shang Tsung and exploring Goro's lair, and there is so much more to it. I do have a significant issue with the crypt however, but I'll talk about that in a bit. There's also a new mode called the Towers of Time, where they're just like the regular towers but some will disappear and reappear, and you can use consumables to aid you in this. When you complete towers you will earn rewards, like certain gear, and in-game currency. Now it's here where a major flaw of the game arises, and it sucks because so far at its core as a fighting game, it does its job and it does its job really well. The Towers of Time is a cool concept and using these consumables to aid you in battle should work, but the thing is, with these consumables being a factor in the Towers of Time, obviously these battles will be more challenging. But here's the thing, there is a fine line between challenging and tedious. The Towers of Time are simply annoying to play, and it's not that I'm bad at the game, I know how to play. Just look at the gameplay here. Wouldn't you think that this is a bit unfair? And to make these fights easier, you can open chests in the crypt to get augments for your character's weapons in the customize mode. But that's where the problem with the crypt arises. You can play for an hour or so and you only have enough coins to open about 5 or 6 chests at max. But the chests give you bugger all. Character art and stage art is not something that I grind for to get a chance to unlock. When I spend my time grinding out the game to get coins for the crypt, I expect to get something that's worthwhile, like augments and even cosmetics such as outfits and skins for my characters. Not something absolutely useless. And if you just want cosmetics for your characters, it's not guaranteed that you'll get them, which is where the featured shop comes in. Time crystals can be attained by doing battles, but in a very small amount. So you can purchase them from the store, so you can buy skins, gear, and extras from the featured shop that shifts every day. Don't know why you would replicate Fortnite's item shop, but okay. This basically means that this game was built with microtransactions in mind, which is a terrible thing. If the crypt and grinding for skins didn't exist and it was purely cosmetic, then fine. But this is bad. And yes, I can grind, but for people like me who doesn't have time to play Mortal Kombat all day, it's a huge problem. The thing is, my favorite character is Noob Cybot, and I would love to customize him, but I don't have the time to grind to do that, and you don't get any items from the story mode for him. Don't get me wrong, I do play this game often, but not often enough. I like to play other games, I also do YouTube, I also have a job, I also like to go out, and the only way out of that is is microtransactions, which pisses me off. You cannot defend this, as I paid a hundred Australian dollars for this game, and I won't spend another cent unless I see that the combat pack is worth it. I love customization options in games, especially in fighting games, but here it is so convoluted. A much better example of a customization system, and this is not a biased opinion, as I like this game nearly equally to MK11, is Tekken 7. You unlock items by completing online tournaments and doing battles in the treasure mode. The items you unlock however, aren't random and usually are specific for the character you're playing as. You can then buy the item outright with the in-game currency in the customized mode. The only microtransactions that game has is through the extra characters in DLC. I wish that Mortal Kombat 11 had a similar system as this. So it's receiving consumables, augments and grinding for a slight chance to get the things that you want is not a good thing, as it's not guaranteed. That is the major problem of this game. It feels like a mobile game and that's not what a mainstream AAA game should be. From when I'm recording this, there are no patches to this problem and I've heard that they will do this, however I won't judge that. I'm being critical here on the game I pre-ordered and played on day one, which is a game built around microtransactions and getting fuck all in the crypt. Okay, that's enough of me ranting, let's move back to the positives, shall we? Customization is here and aside from all the issues with getting the items, the items themselves are pretty good and have a lot of variety, from recolors, skins from the story mode and classic Mortal Kombat outfits. Once again, classic spelt with a K. If it weren't for the convoluted way of getting the skins, I would love the customization feature. But from the stuff I did mess around with, I accidentally made Johnny Cage look a bit too much like Duke Nukem and then I felt uncomfortable. You can also customize the weapons of your characters, not just by the way they look, but you can equip augments which will help you immensely in the Towers of Time. What I also love about the customization system is that you can customize the variations from the characters by picking certain special moves that you would like to have. This is great and it helps you get used to a certain character and I love this. You can not only edit the certain variations, but you can create a whole new one 
one as well. I love this. I do hope there are patches made to the crypt issue so I can get the skins I want, but there is a weird thing about customize. You can program your fighter as a CPU, not just for the AI battles, but for the Towers of Time as well. Yes, you can have the CPU fight for you in the Towers of Time. That's a very weird design choice and I didn't use this and I don't know why I will. That actually reminds me of another thing you can do with the Towers of Time. You can skip fights by using skip fight tokens. What the fuck? I'm not even going to talk about that. So there is also a cinematic story mode in this game and what did I think of it? I liked that actually. It wasn't very good, but I liked it. It's a weird relationship I have with fighting games and their stories. I think all of them are terrible, but I like them. Okay, yes, spoilers are coming up, so skip to the time on screen if you do want to end up playing it. Well, go on. SKIP! I still stand by my argument on fighting game stories. I think the story was really damn stupid, but I still liked it. Basically how it's laid out is each chapter of a story is assigned to a certain character. Like the first chapter is Cassie Cage, and the second one is Kotal Khan, etc. An aspect I really like about the story mode is for some chapters, two characters are assigned to it. Such as the Shaolin monks being Liu Kang and Kung Lao, then Scorpion and Sub-Zero, and even Jax and Jackie Briggs. And you are able to choose a character you would like to play as for each fight. So basically in the story, a being known as Chronica wants to restart time itself for a new era and proposes to Liu Kang and Kitana, which seems to be dead or revenant things, I think, that she'll grant a better timeline or something. And Mortal Kombat have transitioned villains from an iconic villain to the Mortal Kombat franchise with an evil and menacing design to White Woman. Kronika merges timelines, bringing characters from the past to the current timeline, such as Old Raiden, Kitana, the Shaolin Monks, Jade, and evil characters like Scarlet, Eren Black, Kano, Baraka, and Shao Kahn to assist Kronika in resetting the timeline. Obviously a very stupid and cheesy story, but there are elements I like to it. I like how the past versions of characters fight the future versions of themselves. I like some emotional elements like Sonya dying and Cassie dealing with the grief as past Sonya comes back. And I also like how Kodal Khan became a more likable character. So a resistance is formed to stop Kronika with the beings of Earthrealm, and I think it's the Outworld, correct me if I'm wrong. And since Kronika is the Keeper of Time, they try and trick Kronika when Raiden gives Liu Kang god powers, when he becomes Fire God Liu Kang. And when Kronika resets time and Liu Kang defeats her, he becomes the Keeper of Time and time itself restarts. I didn't like the ending as it literally comes down to time Time itself restarting again, so who knows what Mortal Kombat 12 would be like if it even happens. But you know what, whatever. I don't care about the story too much of Mortal Kombat. I care about the core fighting and the gameplay. So will I be critical about the story? No. Will I discuss theories on the next game? No. Do I care about any fighting game story? No. But then again, did I enjoy this one? Yes. But will it affect the ranking of the game? No. But the fact that Jack said here we go again and reminded me of CJ. Ten. So in the end, I enjoyed this game, but it has its problems that honestly cannot be defended. The thing is, I love this game and I'm addicted to the core game. Who knows how long the addiction will last for, but it's sad to see these inexcusable issues. I'm usually okay with microtransactions, even if it's a game like Fortnite. You pay for the in-game currency to directly buy skins that won't affect gameplay. But when you put in microtransactions to avoid the frustration of trying to get the skins, gear and augments for your favorite characters, come on now. And you know what? If you are one of those many Mortal Kombat players that honestly won't do anything outside the local fight mode, you won't notice these issues. But for a person like me who wants to experience all the content of this game, it's very frustrating. Nevertheless though, Mortal Kombat 11 makes the good list and gets a 7.5 out of 10. If you're a fighting game fan, I do recommend this game, but just know if you want to get certain items and customization options, it's going to be very frustrating. I'm hoping to whatever that is holy that they do add patches for this. But for the meantime, I will focus on the fighting at its core and learning all the characters, but Quan Chi and Ermac aren't in it, so 0 out of 10. If you're listening to this, that means you made it to the end, which is awesome. Thank you so much. Don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe with those notifications turned on to see my future content. Also share this video around if you'd like to let others know about this video. Thank you all so much once again, and I'll talk to you before you know it. See you later.